What's up, guys? I'm Diz. This is Domino. And today, since we've spent too many days in our house, um, I started going through the top picks on Netflix. And I realized that the top 10 on Netflix change a lot. So I realized that this is no longer the top 10 is what I'm trying to say for my future self. But as my present self, these are probably not the top 10 anymore. <laughs> so we are just gonna dig, just gonna jump right into that number one spot of the Tiger King Mayhem, no, what is it? Murder Mayhem Madness. Now, I've seen a lot of memes about this show and got stupid excited because it says tiger. <laughs> like, I thought this was gonna be a show about cats. And you know, I normally like to keep things pretty spoil free, but this section is very spoiler. There's a lot, because I have a lot that I want to, what the, shh, what the, and I can't even blame it on like false advertising because I didn't watch any of the advertisements. I just saw memes. And I don't even know why those memes led me to believe that this was going to be a show about tigers, because it's not. It's not about tigers at all. It's about the people who own tigers and not even like cool people that own tigers. And I mean that to be offensive. Like, these people are not cool. These people should not have the number one spot on Netflix. Why are we watching shows about these kinds of people? These guys are almost like unrealistically messed up. This is the kind of stuff that we see in pretend land on the, the, the big screen. This isn't real. This can't be real. These people can't be real. <coughs> it's not Corona, I swear. <laughs> It was about 20 minutes of watching the show. Then my husband comes up and he's like, oh, I need TV, blah, 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 blah. fix my computer. So I paused it and I realized I was 20 minutes in and that I only had like another 20, 30 minutes. And I was like, this is sweet because this show sucks. And then I realized it said season one, episode one. Shit, it's a series? It's a whole series. There's a whole series of this. There's episode after episode after episode of this garbage. And did I watch it all? <laughs> you betcha I did. Because <laughs> you get to watching it and then you get to wondering where are the tigers at? When are we going to when are we going to see some tigers? Because like in the beginning you see a lot of tigers and you do see quite a bit of tigers throughout the show. But it's like they're talking and then you see the tigers and they're not talking about the tigers. They're talking about the people who own the tigers, not the tigers. I'm not learning anything about tigers. I learned a lot about people's opinions. I don't care about people's opinions about owning big cats. I want to know facts can i get some facts because all i got was opinion and opinions are great but opinions are like buttholes everybody has one like i want to know the truth about owning big cats let's get back to the real the real things here the show starts and the guy who's making the show runs into this guy who has a snow leopard in the back of his van this guy says shouldn't that cat be refrigerated you don't God damn it. He says this and I automatically envision instead of the crate that the cat's in, but it to be in a refrigerator. The guy tries to explain to him that the cat's acclimate, blah, 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 blah. Let's all come to facts here. That cat should not be in the back of a hot van because nobody should be in the back of a hot van. A dog, person, child. They even have signs when you go into Walmart that says do not leave your children in a hot car. That does not mean that the cat needs to be refrigerated. And I get what he's saying about the climate part of it, but why would you use the word refrigerated? Like it's like it's deli meat. <laughs> the next thing I want to bring up about the show in the first episode, we see him like showing off his gift shop. This guy is something else. And you look around and see the stuff that he has and he's like, ooh, these underwear are a top seller, which I personally would not buy underwear from a roadside zoo. That's weird to me. <laughs> but what's even weirder is that he sells sex lube. What? Sex, sex lube? Sex lube. I, I realize seeing big cats can really put you in the mood, but like, what? Why would you think to sell that at a zoo? <laughs> Zoos are directed towards education for children about animals that they would not normally get to see. Why is there lube in this in the gift shop? It's like he's trying to get them to make more clientele. <laughs> like, what? Okay, so the next thing I want to bring up is about the guy himself. When I first saw him and I saw the gun on his hip, I was like, that is a smart man. If you are running a zoo with a bunch of large cats who you get into the cage with and handle them, you don't have a defense 
because we like to believe we're the top of the food chain, but we're only the top of the food chain because of the mechanisms we have. Okay, those mechanisms being guns. <laughs> when you're dealing with cats like that, if that cat starts to attack you and you have no other line of defense, and I mean you should go through every line of defense before you use that handgun, because that's that cat's life is very precious and should be taken very seriously. I'm not saying that shooting big cats is a good thing. I'm saying that when one is attacking you, having that gun could be your only chance of living through this. So when I saw him with the gun on his hip, I was like, that is actually pretty smart. Because where I'm from, there are bears and bears normally are not aggressive. I used to have one come down in our yard and eat plums out of our plum tree. So I'd be outside with my mom's dog smoking a cigarette and he'd be running around. He's a little shima, okay? He's like this big. He was owl bait is what he was. The most adorable dog I've ever seen in my life. No offense, dog. I used to take him outside and he would run around and then I would hear the bear crunch in the branches because he would, she, she, I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was just a bear. I didn't get close enough to investigate his genitalia, nor do I know what it wants to identify as. So I was never in fear knowing that that bear. So I'm here and then, you know, we have some space here and then we have the, the trees over here. So I'm within like walking distance of this bear crunching over in these trees. Was I afraid for my life? No. Did I feel that I needed a gun in that moment? No, because I'm on, I'm, I'm next to the house. You know, that bear's not gonna come up and bother me. It has no interest in bothering me. It does have an interest in eating those plums though. But if I am hiking around the forest, I may be a threat. I'm no longer in my territory. I'm in its territory and I don't know where that bear is compared to where that bear's babies are. So especially in the spring, you always wanna be careful and everybody knows you gotta be a little bit cautious because you could potentially get yourself into a bad situation. There's also mountain lions who, by the way, mountain lions are a lot scarier than bears because mountain lions will actually stalk you. Bears are more like, man, they're just people. Mountain lions who are like, mm, that's a good cheeseburger right there. Up north, up, up, up here in the north, we like to to carry guns. I did. I, I always felt safer when I had a gun with me. Not, not to, not. It's not about people. It's about cats. Actually, it was mainly just in case the, the mountain lion decided I was dinner. Like I said, not saying killing big cats is a good idea. I'm just saying protecting yourself is. Now, come to find out later on in the show, it's not about protecting myself from the cats at all. It's about protecting myself from the people. The people that are gonna come in here, those PETA. What the f fucking hell? Did you have to make gun owners look like douchebags? That's really my point here. Like, here he is, like, shooting this and shooting that and blowing this up. Which, by the way, shooting this and shooting that is fun, and blowing stuff up is fun. But he took it to a different level of, of it being fun to being a threat. That, that is my point here. I, I believe wholeheartedly in freedom of speech and the freedom of carrying a gun. And I know I'm gonna get flagged for that, whatever. Now, there is a line here that has been crossed. This guy, who we are all putting up on a pedestal in the number one Netflix spot, is what I like to call a douchebag. <laughs> he just made everybody look stupid. And I feel stupider watching it. <laughs> and then on the other hand, we have this girl who, I don't know her name either, but that's okay, it doesn't matter, um, who, who is just as, just as stupid, but on the other spectrum of stupid. She's not his kind of stupid. She is her own breed, own special breed. And then they start talking about her killing her husband, and by the way, yes, she did. Just look at her, look at her face. She's a total psychopath in there. Like, she got no eyes, no soul behind those eyes. You can tell she killed her husband, chopped him up, and fed him to the cats. That's just my opinion. I have no, no, nothing to base that off of, but I saw it in her eyes. You can see it. She's probably a serial killer. She's probably killing a lot of people to feed those tigers. Like, that's the story I want to see. I want to see them come out and be like, she's mass murderer <laughs> feeding people to the tigers. 
that's enough of that show. Um, the number two spot was Ozark, which I still haven't gotten a chance to watch. Although, just judging by the look of it and having Jason Bateman, it is something that I want to watch. And since I decided to throw this all together, I didn't want to rush through watching that. I want to actually get to sit down and watch it. So if you guys have seen Ozark, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are in the comment. Don't spoil it for me. Although I totally just spoiled the Tiger King for you. Don't spoil Ozark for me, okay? The number three spot was All American. And All American, it looked like because i didn't watch that either it looks like a football movie which I, a football tv show sorry you, to make it even worse i don't want to sit down and watch a tv show about football i have no interest in sports that's a lie i do have some interest in sport i don't have enough interest in sports to sit down and actually watch that i'd rather watch ozark because that looks good to me although tay Diggs does make it appealing and if i get bored enough and if this goes on for long enough i may end up watching it <laughs> The number four spot was how to fix a drug scandal. And I'm not gonna ruin, ruin anything on this because I actually do want you guys to watch this if this is the kind of thing that you're into. If you're not into it, then to watch it. It's about these two girls who are in the same state of Massachusetts who are not connected together, but they're connected together because of the job that they had. What they do is they are the chemist that evaluates the drugs. So when you get arrested, those drugs get sent to a lab. They are the people that analyze that to see if it is a drug and what kind of drug it is. Now, those two girls um, have two completely different stories and two completely different ways of how they fucked shit up. And that, my friends, was super interesting. Yes, it is all a documentary, so but it's not like a doc boring documentary of like, ooh, watch this tree grow. It's a super interesting documentary, but this is coming from a person that actually does like to watch documentaries. I do like to watch documentaries where we're like, huh, watch this tree grow, because I think that's fascinating. When I started watching it, I, just, I was completely unaware of what it was even about. And as it got going, by the end of the first episode, I was, I was hooked and had to continue watching. So like I said, worth watching, give it a go. Now the number five spot was Nailed It. Now Nailed It, it's one of those shows that's like just a pastime show where you can put it on the background. You don't really have to watch, watch it. Um, which I like those shows because I like to be able to play my phone and not really pay attention to what's going on. But I do like to see the creations in the end. So if you don't know what Nailed It is, here you go. They have three normal people who like to bake. Not professional in any way, shape, or form. They give them this ridiculous task of creating this beautiful piece of pastry. And then they have to recreate it. Which is a genius idea for a show. But my problem with the show, and I know I'm probably gonna get black for saying this, but I don't like Nicole. She has so much gold in her where she doesn't really have to put forth a huge amount of effort. It's more like a natural gift effort. And I appreciate that a lot about her. My problem with her is I don't think that she's as funny as everybody else seems to. Um, her kind of comedy, her style is not the kind of comedy I like and not the style that I like. I think that she takes things a bit too far. I like my comedy a bit more subtle. I don't know if subtle is the right word that I want to use. I don't find a, a lot of physical humor funny, actually. There's a whole bunch of like Jim Carrey's work that I just think is over the top and too far. I love Jim Carrey. Don't get me wrong. I think he is hilarious. But some of it is just too far. And I don't like it in comedies when they take it to that next level. They, they gotta take it to that over the top bit. The number six spot was The Roommate. Now, damn it, <laughs> why did I watch this? I, I looked at it and was like, oh, this is a movie when I was writing out the list and I was like, oh, I could watch this, this would be quick. It was regrettable, definitely regrettable. This movie didn't even know how to movie correctly. Like, what the junk? So. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to try not to spoil as much as I can for you, but some of my complaints are going to be some spoilers, but they are little spoilers. I feel like if you watch a trailer for it, it's going to spoil most of it for you anyways, so I'm not going to tell you anything about the end, just a couple pieces in the middle. So, <clears throat> you have the main character, who is a beautiful woman, and then you have, she is going to college, and she is in a dorm, and her roommate, hence the title, The Roommate, uh, her roommate is buckshit crazy and does a bunch of crazy things. With that being said, the movie has some undertones that are not so undertone. The character, the main beautiful character, gets hit on by her professor. And if you don't see where this is going, I'm going to spell it out for you. 
He is a predator professor. She goes and tells her roommate. Her roommate then decides to defend her. And instead of doing a normal way of defending her, she goes to the professor and makes him, turns him into like a predator with her and she records it. Anyways, in that moment of seeing this girl with this predator professor, you kind of start feeling bad for the bad girl. Like she's the bad evil character. Why are you putting her in the position of a predator professor and making him look even more predatory when you're supposed to be hating this girl? Not him, her, her. Don't try to separate my hatred. I want my hatred going in one direction and I want it going to her, not to him, her. The next complaint I have is here she is, the roommate, okay? The creepy one is pumping her gas. And then this guy comes up and he's this predator kind of guy and he like touches her hand while she's gassing up and he's totally creepy. And you're like, what the hell? There were not very many guy roles in the show, okay? And then the boyfriend of the, the, the hot chick about that the show's about. When he first meets her, he's like, oh yeah, frat guys like to get girls drunk and take them home. That is 100% of guys in this world are some sort of creepy one way or the other. Even the guy that we're rooting for, he's creepy in some way or another. So according to this show, 100% of guys are like, no, they are not. That is completely inaccurate and false. 100% of guys are not bad guys. That's not a thing. That's not real. The second thing I want to complain about is that there's a part in it where one of the other girls, not the hot girl or the, the scary bad girl, we're talking a different girl, is in the shower. Okay, the lights go off, creepy mood is set. And I know scary movies got a scary movie, but damn it, scary movies, you don't gotta be dumb. If the lights went off in the shower and other showers started turning on, you bet my naked towel covered ass would be booking it out of there. I would not hang out and shut water off. I would not hang out and be like, I know it's you. I'd be like, I know it's you, bye. <laughs> Number seven was Unorthodox. Now, Unorthodox from the trailer I watched is one of those movies I have to read. If, you know, I'm dyslexic, guys. I don't want to read and try to watch a movie at the same time. Unless it's super good, I'm not doing it. And yeah, it did look good, but it didn't look super good. So if you guys have seen Unorthodox and it actually is super good, I'm wrong. Please comment down below and I will watch it. Number eight was The Players Club. Uh, that didn't look like a movie I'd like to watch either. I, and I know everybody's got their own taste, but out of this top 10 so far, this is a bunch of stuff that I don't want to watch. Number nine was Salt. I saw Salt when it first came out. I think I was working in the movie theater when Salt came out. Anyways, I saw it then and haven't seen it since. I don't actually remember if it's good or bad. That's probably a bad thing. So yeah, I'm not going to watch that one either. And number 10 was Bloodfather. Now, Bloodfather is a movie that I have seen, haven't seen in a long time. Don't remember a lot of the plot. It's almost to that point where watching it again would be super good, but I'm worried that it hasn't quite been enough time. So when I watch it again, I'm going to start remembering. It's one of those movies I want to forget a whole bunch of it and then watch it again. And it'd be like watching it for the first time. With this all being said, there are three movies that I've seen that I would advise watching. One that I would watch. So we're going to say a potential on four that I would say to watch out of ten. I think this top ten list has failed me. If you guys think that this top ten list has not failed you, because four out of ten is a failing score for me, four out of ten is a failing score for everybody. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, leave me a note down in the comments letting me know that you like the top ten list. On that note, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like me, hit subscribe. Turn on notifications so you don't miss the next one. If you just like my dog, because she's passed out and adorable, you can follow her on Instagram. at this is having a bad day. And thank you for watching. Stick around for the outtakes. Stick around for the outtakes. Stick around for the outtakes. Get at her. Get at her. Get her pets. <laughs> get at her. Don't look at me like you think I'm lying to you. No, seriously. You're the ying to my yang, or the yang to my ying. Which one's the black one? And Dizzy, you can't even seem to accomplish wiping your own bum. You cannot. <laughs> Don't say that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. I like my cutout. Uh, uh, uh. I guess you could be the white one.